We are here with Mayor of Midlothian. Uh, this is Jason Decker with uh, the Midlothian Illinois Voters Block with some questions for our mayor. Uh, we'll start right off with, um, what is your name? Gary LaRue. And how long have you lived in Midlothian? Uh, going on 30 years now. Okay, and where did you come from? Uh, originally I'm from Florida. Okay. And I met my, uh, got out, I left Florida, joined the Navy, and uh, when I got out of the Navy, there wasn't a lot going on in Florida, so I had an opportunity to come here to the Chicagoland area, and uh, eventually met my current wife, who uh, eventually brought me here to Midlothian to meet her parents, and I just fell in love with the town, so, so almost 30 years. How long have you been mayor? Uh, so this is my first term. Uh, we're going on a little over three and a half years. Uh, next election is coming up in April. Um, what office did you hold, if any, before mayor? I was appointed trustee, village trustee in 2012, July of 2012. Uh, ran for a successful election for trustee in April of 2013. So four and a half, almost five years as trustee, and then I ran for mayor. So. Um, where did you start your career in public service? Uh, pretty much from the day we moved in to Midlothian. Um, got involved with the kids sports programs and uh, their school programs, uh, coaching, managing, refing, umping, uh, and then I got on the board of the uh, baseball program and then eventually was elected uh, president of the board. Uh, so that's, I believe that's kind of where I started. Uh, I don't consider a public service. It was just the thing to do. I mean, you got kids and they're involved and you got to get involved with them. So. But uh, uh, other than that, uh, once they got to high school, uh, the high school coaches took over and we just spent uh, more time watching and, and, and uh, meeting people and building relationships. And my fish, official government position, I guess, would have been the community policing committee, uh, Mayor Stevens appointed me to that, I became the chairman of that, and also uh, I was on the planning commission. And that's when you were already a trustee though? No. Oh, so you were just, uh, you were appointed yeah, to the committee? 2000, 2009, I think that was. But it was not a paid position? No. So it was it was public service? Yeah. So, um, what are your official duties as mayor? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> So it's technically the chief executive officer of the village. It's the village president. Um, the good news is that we have all of our department heads are, are wonderful and fantastic, and they they, they run the day to day, uh, but keep me in constant contact in the loop of what's going on, and I do the same with them. But it's uh, officially it's to oversee meetings uh, and oversee the. Um, finances of the village, the audits of the village, uh, it, it's everything. It really does entail everything. Um, what is your personal favorite thing about being mayor? Uh, the residents of Midlothian. I just, I can't tell you how much we are fortunate that the people here, it's just a great town, it's a great hardworking town, and it shows with the, the mass amount of residents that they get involved and help out and volunteer countless hours and, and it shows, you know, he's driving around town with the with the flower boxes and the and the welcome to Lothian signs and just everything. So that my f favorite thing is the residents. Um, so what is your least favorite thing about being mayor? What is uh, or, or maybe not least favorite? Well, let's answer it both ways. What is your least favorite and probably the hardest part of being mayor? The hardest part, unless those are different answers, but usually they fall. I it, it's it's a challenge. Uh, because it is a part-time position I do have to hold a full-time job and I think the challenge is uh, meeting all the requests that are put on me uh, from individuals groups organizations uh, golf outings fundraisers you know there's there's so many things going on and I have to balance that with uh, my my day job my real job my full-time job I should say and my family and my grandkids and, and now with uh, with my in-laws moving back and moving in with us. So it, it, that's the challenge. I mean, it's not my least favorite thing to do, but it's it's just a challenge. It's, and, it's a disadvantage. Uh, or would you call it a disadvantage? I, I don't know that Midlothian uh, needs a full-time mayor because, first of all, the salary would go way up and we just... 
we need to keep the money where it's at to put it in the right places and it shouldn't go towards uh, in, a, in an official that has full-time department heads and full-time employees and you know we don't have any part-time uh, uh, departments right. so everything's full-time so that's what we hire them for and that's what they get paid to do uh, so it, it, it's, it's just a challenge right. that's all um, if you could name one thing that the village needs the most and not money, because that's too easy. Everybody needs more money. But if the village could acquire or have one something better, um, you know, what would you want that to be? Well, there, there's 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 a lot of issues. There's there's you know, no issue is less important than the other issue. Every issue needs to be looked into and addressed with the same amount of, of vigor as the other one. Your issue is the most important thing to you right. and may not, and no one else cares about it, but to you, this is the most important thing. So we have to look into that. So I think realistically at this time, uh, it, it's the economic development. It's, it's our, what we consider our downtown area here, the 147th Pulaski area. And it's just been stagnant for decades. We all have seen it. We all know it. Um, and I hate to keep using the same word challenge, but the challenge in this area is not only it's in a floodplain, some of it's in a floodplain, there's no parking, uh, storefronts are built up almost to the, the street. Uh, we have heavy traffic flow, high speed counts, and that's what, we, we, what we're in a process of doing right now is getting a, a TIF in place, a tax increment financing district, which we can uh, finally start to amass some money to put into this area to incentivize new development, uh, property acquisition, property demolition, infrastructure, all the things that new businesses uh, will want and need to, to come here. So in my eyes, this is gonna look a lot different in, in the coming years than it, than it has been for the last 50. So and that's through, through the TIF? Through the TIF. Okay. And uh, so if one and now, thing we need is, is that TIF to get in place so we can start uh, amassing that money for a couple people that are going to enjoy this video let me ask you this where does the tiff come from is that from the county or from the state or the is, it a, is it a combination uh, of has, things because no, the state is, is given the authority to any municipality to create a, a tiff okay uh, we do it on our own we pay for it on our own uh, some of the cost of creating the tiff can be re be reimbursable from the tiff gotcha. but it's all on us to get it in place and, and make it work and manage it and then we're audited through the state yes okay so it's not just it's not your call are, are you 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 and the board can't the decide. board had to approve moving forward with creating the tip yes but it has to be approved by a higher power being the county or the state not necessarily okay as long as, as long as we follow the, the rules of of establishing a tip and, and managing the tip uh, then so it's, so up, guess, it's up to the village it is okay, but yes, the state does audit us because there's some neighboring communities that are having problems with their TIF zones and and what's going on. So I just wanted that yeah. to be clear from you right. and your perspective. Now, different towns are chartered differently. You follow different guidelines. You follow different protocols. But right. um, not to get off topic here, but so um, so my next question kind of follows in with that is if if you personally if somebody gave the mayor of Midlothian a million dollar grant literally handed you a million dollars where if you had to put it all in one spot or towards one goal that would that's that's where it would go as, as far as like developing the downtown corridor well as we all know uh, flooding has been an issue in town for since it's our inception we have over the years money has been spent uh, to, to try to alleviate some of that it just wasn't enough you know the Natalie Creek bridges or arch culverts were put in on Keystone Carlup and Keeler to try to help the water get out of the, the flood prone area, flood prone area. It just, it just wasn't enough. Uh, thankfully, again, we go back to our residents, a small group of residents that just were tenacious and wouldn't, wouldn't take no for an answer and kept talking and going to different places and different people. And they just they kept after, kept after, kept after, and finally got the the Natalie Creek project started and should be completed this year. That was almost a $9 million project, thanks to these small group of reds. It's, it's overwhelming, again, to, to see what transpired. 
but we also have spent money on studies for the other three areas, Jolly Homes mm -hmm. area, the Belly Button Hill area, and the Bremen Heights area. Out of those studies, we did, uh, were able to get finance, uh, financing based, not financing, but money to do the engineering part of the Jolly Homes area. Right. Now that's just the second part. The third part is the actual construction. That's usually a lot more than what the engineering costs. Right. That could be five or six million dollars that we're going to need over there. So uh, you would throw that million toward I, in the pot? You know, it's just, <laughs> you know that's the that's the weirdest thing you, you said before we started talking about you know or the question is what what do we mean you know money isn't money's the too easy answer but bottom line is everything costs so much money we have to replace just one block of water main on 147th uh, from uh, Kilpatrick to Cicero exit is two blocks because Keating's in there but that's three four hundred thousand dollars you know. And just to get it off the ground, you have to hire the engineers to do the engineering work and hire the company to do it. I mean, it's just, it's it's, it's crazy and how much, I, I've seen how much things cost. And I'm sure the EPA comes in and, and more more agencies to oversee. There's a lot of restrictions. Right. And when I took off, we, we didn't have a vehicle replacement fund and to find out that a fire truck costs over $500,000 and we hadn't replaced one you know, ambulances are three hundred thousand dollars. You know, police cars are the cheapest ones. They're in the thirty to forty thousand range. It's just crazy how much everything costs. So, honestly, a million dollars is nothing. Just wouldn't even. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we we have about a ten million dollar annual budget. Thankfully, again, because of our treasurer Britain, we have been passing balanced budgets with just a little bit of surplus each year. But it it's it's a budget, and right. as long as we stick to that budget, we'll be fine. It's those, uh, it's those tornadoes that come through town, and our public works are working 12, 14 hour days to, to clear things out of the street and out of people's homes, and you, you, you can't account for that. You just Unexpected. never know. You know. Um, all right, uh, so back to the downtown area. On, on a scale of one to 10, uh, if you could rate the appeal of downtown Midlothian to businesses, residents, and visitors. Like if you do three different, we do three different scales there. Like how would you rate it on a scale of one to 10 to the businesses that are either here or appeal to a business for coming here? So like, how would you, how, how would you rate it as, as if I'm a business owner and I want to open up a business here in Midlothian, how would you sell that to me? Or how would you honestly rate it me on a scale of one to 10 with its current condition? I'd say a five, honestly, just to be completely honest. That's it's what we're looking not... for. It, it, it is just not conducive. We, we have some established, you know, Firestone's been here for years. They're doing great. They're in a position, they're just outside of the floodplain. You know, they're doing great there. You know, they Dollar have Tree was a nice parking. The Dollar Tree, a uh, nice addition. So many people I know shop there, I shop there, parking. They have a nice parking lot. You go to the north, that, that building on the north side, the old family uh, video. South. South. What's the way plane? So, you know, it's it's in a floodplain. We did we did have people interested in it, but it's in a floodplain, and you can only invest so much money into it right. because FEMA won't insure if it's over too much. Right. So that it's a tough question, and, it, and it's hard to be honest about that. But it it is it, it's not good. It's not. That's a, a fair assessment, though. In my in good. my opinion, not that my opinion really matters here. I'm just the interviewer, but you know, a five is is an honest answer. And, and honestly, you know. Trying to get someone in there that's going to survive long term, you know, we, we lost our vacuum store of over forty years. It, it, it's just it's heartbreaking, but he can't compete with Amazon's and the WalMarts and the Targets. Where you know, just kind of making some numbers up a little bit, he has to sell a vacuum belt for five dollars. Where Amazon, you get three for five, and you don't have to leave your house. And you have to leave your house. So it, it's things like that. We have to look for unique things that people need and want to go to and that's that's the challenge and again there's no parking uh, you, there's all street parking you can get a couple cars out front and it's just not conducive for what we want a long-term established business and so that's what we're, like I said the, the TIF we get it in place we get it rolling it's gonna take time everything takes time I've learned that too I'm a very patient man uh, but everything takes time. But once we get it rolling, 
this is a long process. You know, our, our complex here is literally falling down around us. We finally were able to uh, get some money to uh, redo the roof. You still see the remnants of the, of the roof. It was all over the whole complex. The public works building is literally falling down, is not uh, efficient at all. Uh, so that's gonna have to be addressed. We're in currently in the process of building a new public safety facility just because it's, it's outdated. It doesn't uh, follow any guidelines, federal, state, whatever, you know, as far as not just the employees, but uh, prisoners, you know, there, there's just, there's just a lot, you know, and that can be fun to see it all come together, but it's a long process. It's going to be a long process. You mean there's no magic wand? You just there's wait no and magic get wand. There's no magic uh, money tree and it, it's, it's tough. You know, that's, that's the, to say I don't even say bad. It's it's it, it's it's fun to see it all come together, and when you just have to have the patience. You gotta have and patience. deal with procedures. You gotta have patience. <laughs> so then, so then, on a one one to ten scale for the appeal of downtown Midlothian to residents, would follow probably the, same, the same way it because of parking and, and, and lack of businesses, maybe. And you know, uh, there's an individual trying to develop the Honda building. And I think it's going to be the same issue when you're trying to develop a fairly good sized building into several different smaller units. Where are they going to park at? You know, we have this property here. This whole block to the north of, of Village Hall is for sale. And I do envision the village once we get some tip money to buy the public parking and get some public parking. You know, our train station, I don't know what's going to happen with this pandemic or the future after the pandemic. But you drive by there now, and that. And then, so it would, it would probably be a five as well for visitors to Absolutely. from outside the Lothian coming here. Yeah. All right. Um, the last question we have <clears throat> is: uh, Have you ever attended or watched other um, village or city council meetings? Um, Just to see how they operate, or who you know. I have watched Orleans online, but that's probably it. No, I mean I. As I, even before I became trustee, I was I was in the audience all the time, and I, I, I got to learn the ropes. I, I got to see how things were, were run and learn about Robert's Rules Order and um, just to see how things flow. And uh, so that was a big help for me when I became a trustee. And then of course being in the plan commission, um, get to see how that you know lower commission from the village board worked. And so uh, I think they're all pretty much the same. Yeah. I don't, you know. I was just curious. I've, I've met a few that watch and, and even attend others just yeah. to see how they go. You know, just. All right, so that's the questions we had from, from the Midlothian, Illinois Voters Block. We took um, many uh, opportunities for people to ask or put down questions of their own. We only have three. Um, I'll start with outside of Midlothian. We had two questions. One is, uh, what is, what is your salary as mayor of Midlothian? Uh, gross is 24 Eight, 24 or five. That's your salary That's for true. the whole year? Yeah. Okay. Um, very simple. Um, the other one, uh, no, I, I'm sorry, that was one from outside Midlothian, and we are one from outside Midlothian. We have two from, from residents here in Midlothian. One is when, when COVID got bad, these are just two examples that we were given, but it was worded as when COVID got bad and when the tornado hit, why didn't you give more updates or announcements? Why didn't I give more? Yeah. Well, the, uh, the I, I'll be completely honest with, with the COVID thing. I met with our fire chief, uh, Steve Hotwanger, end of February. And we decided that we we're gonna take this very seriously. We, we just didn't know, it was way early. We didn't know what to do, but we decided we were gonna take it seriously. And he started uh, making sure that all of his paramedics were wearing PPE on every call. Uh, we shut down the front off the, the front lobby to try to help protect uh, our employees up there. Uh, we put uh, our public works on split shifts so that they weren't riding two in a vehicle. We we did a lot very early on, uh, early March, to uh, help protect our in, uh, employees. Uh, and uh, 
I, I feel like I did put out quite a few updates early on. Um, it just, it was a slow, it, as far as Midlothian goes, we're, we're currently at 366 um, positive cases. That's over a nine month period, right. you know? So as I watched the numbers in Midlothian, it didn't look like we were doing that bad, especially compared to other towns. So over time, you know, I, 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 try, I go to di different businesses and um, places and, and I saw that they were, uh, for the most part, uh, following all the guidelines. Our health inspector was, was sent out to visit all the businesses and, and he was uh, keeping me in a loop saying that most people, were, uh, most places were following the guidelines and, and if they weren't, he, he would have them corrected. So I didn't, uh, I guess, as, as time moved on, you know, things weren't out of hand or out of control, so there wasn't much to no. update about. Okay. Um, and the tornado, yeah. uh, so there was other questions I heard, why wasn't this, the sirens so, uh, sounded? So we go with our, our dispatch center over in Bula, or, uh, Cal Park, the, they're the ones that that keep us in the loop on when it goes on or off, you know, when it gets set off. Up until the tornado hit, the National Weather Service was just predicting a, a severe thunderstorm. So there wouldn't have been a reason to set it off. So bottom line is it wasn't a tornado until it instantly was a tornado. And it was too late at that point to, to sound anything. Uh, our, our, all of our departments were scrambling uh, to just get through the storm and make sure everyone was safe. But uh, I'm not sure what updates people were looking for as far as the tornado. Just the messenger. Oh. Um, but that, that satisfies the answer as far as I'm concerned. Um, and plus, as, as me and you have talked, you know, you're not hard to get a hold of. Sure. If people want updates, they want to call you, they want to email you, um, you know, when you're not working. Text you're call, usually here. email, Facebook messenger. Uh, right. Uh, I, Maria is our, uh, our deputy clerk and also my assistant. She's very uh, proactive with uh, responding to people and, and letting me know what's going on. So I'm very, very uh, reachable yeah. and approachable. There you go. I, I, uh, the final question is from here in Midlothian. It says, it's basically quoted from the village website um, where you say you want to return Midlothian to its full potential. Um, <clears throat> they ask what work has been done and what work will be done um, in future years to return Midlothian to its full potential? So what kind of got me started in this in the beginning is hearing residents, my wife, our friends that are lifelong, my wife's a lifelong resident, I have lots of friends that are lifelong residents, and through all these conversations, all I heard was what Midlothian used to be. It used to be, it used to be, it used to be. I heard it over and over and over again. And I just thought, well, why can't we Get, I mean, we're not going to get Riley's trip shot, a trick shot back. We're not going to get to Ben Franklin back. You know, things that adults now that grew up here uh, just loved about the town. You know, some of those things aren't ever going to come back. But we can certainly provide an experience that kids living here today will remember when they're our age. So what work has been done is uh, basically the. The one TIF was put in place over there on Cicero a number of years back. And you see what happened over there. Because of that, we got the Ricky Rockets, we got the drive time, we got Cars Inc. And because of that doing so well, uh, Bill K. Ford is looking to do a major uh, upgrade of their facility. They don't, they love Midlothian, they don't want to leave, leave, leave Midlothian, and we certainly don't want them to leave Midlothian. So we're working on uh, incentivizing them with, with hopefully some TIF money or sales tax sharing or whatever, however we're gonna work it out, but we wanna make sure that they're, um, they got the incentives to, to stay and grow. So that was one. Uh, we've worked on, of course, the flooding issues over the years. Uh, now we're working on this TIF to uh, try to get this area done. And then we'll eventually we'll get over to uh, Kedzie. There's, there's too many residential properties uh, between Central Park and the Kedzie Business District. Uh, to really include it in this TIF. So that'll be, have to be a third TIF. Uh, it, it's, just, it's just keep pounding away at the things that 
have been stagnant for so long. Um, I mean, working with the business owners, trying to get them to uh, make sure that they're keeping their properties kept up and clean and, and, and uh, welcoming to people and uh, just doing everything we can to, to help our, our businesses and our residents along the way. So I'm not, I think that's good enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very what, much. What else? You don't, you don't have anything? Personal question? No. No. Okay. no, this was all just very, like I said, boilerplate, get, you know, for people who don't know you, for people who are going to get to know you, and we got, you got an election coming up. Sure. Um, I will hopefully we get some more interviews sure. once, once, you know, once November's over and, and this election cycle's done and we start, you know, seeing other candidates pop up and, um, you know, I'm sure it'll get interesting here in Midlothian and hopefully we can keep these kind always, of interviews going. It's always and, interesting. Very much so. I appreciate the time. So, so, yeah, that was it. We already hit uh, 25 minutes, so okay. I mean, that's plenty for me. Thank cool. you. Thanks.